there. So we are, well, Martin and I are doing this job with the radials and it made me realize that why isn't this massive four square? Why is it not gonna work during the day? So let me explain. Okay, so briefly, a low to the ground dipole, a low to the ground delta loop, anything end fed, doesn't matter, low to the ground now, you know, six to 20 feet, two to five meters or something like that. You end up inevitably on a far field plot, if that's the ground, of your RF looking, at, if you could see the RF come out of a boom, right, it would look like a big ball, slightly flattened at the top, depending on the height. If As we raise this up, this dipole, this whatever it is, you'll start to see a dent form in the, in the top. Well, you can't see it, but we can measure it. So that is great for when we want our RF to go between, let's say, that kind of 90 degree arc here, and we want our RF going that way. Right, now let's look at a vertical. So a vertical on the ground, right? There's a little vertical here. Our RF is doing that and I will attempt to match that both sides oh, nearly to where we've got this dead zone at the top and depending on the ground conditions there's a few other variables but however most of our gain I think peak gain is like at 22 degrees something like that and there's a healthy amount of gain lower down all right so you can see that if you transpose one on top of the other that was going to be a bit here which is going to have more gain and a bit here which is going to have more gain on the other antenna so what is the benefit of either one and why and when right well it comes down to the ionosphere so let's go back outside and i will explain the ionosphere has got a number of layers in it and the only two layers i want to talk about right now are the f layer and the d layer so during the day the D layer it effectively kind of heats up. The electrons go jiggly wiggly and um, it becomes like a sponge. It's been like this, actually, a sponge. So the signals, they can just get through the D layer if they're going high, they're going at a high angle. But if they're going at a low angle, the D layer will absorb it. It's like a sponge, okay? So that's why during the day, the um low angles of radiation it's not going to work so what happens is that the rf continues have i got another piece of heat shrink on the go here oh there it is the rf goes through the the d layer at a high angle and if you like this green bit here that that can be at the f layer it hits the f layer bounces and comes back down as long as it's at a fairly high angle there won't be as much absorption on the D layer, but the F layer will refract it and it will come back down again. And if you do the maths, anything between about uh, 80 degrees off the... <sighs> Bucket's too far away. Um, anything between about 80 degrees off the horizontal, which is 10 degrees, if you like, off the, off the vertical, and about 45 degrees um, will refract off our, off our green bit. Any lower than that, and we've got too much of the sponge, too much of the D layer to go through, and it'll get absorbed before it even gets to the F layer. So there's no need to, I mean, effectively that's the side. So the, the F layer will refract quite happily, but in the main, the D layer is gonna get in the way. Now, and so we're aiming for fairly high angles. However, if it's very high, like 90 degrees, it will still refract. A bit like if you put a broomstick into a swimming pool, you know, it looks a funny shape inside the water. The signals go up, refract, but very rarely will they come straight back down they'll go out a little bit so you end up with a bit of a dead zone which is why you know if kevin in coventry he'd probably struggle hearing me seven excuse me seven miles away from uh holly farm but fred in cheltenham about 50 miles away he's probably just on the limit and you can do the maths but from about 50 to 250 miles maybe 350 kilometers is your nvis daytime skip zone okay 
Then the shadows start to lengthen and our sponge here starts to melt away because the electrons aren't being, um, there's a technical term, jigglyfied, right? <laughs> jigglyfied by the sun, the electrons. And they'll let go and effectively the D layer goes to sleep. Right? Now the F layer um, will refract, it will still refract, but of course we can have a much lower angle now. So therefore from here, like London or Birmingham to Cyprus, it's, it's 3000 kilometers. It's just outside a single skip. So you'll probably, from here to Cyprus, 3,000 miles, it's probably two bounces, okay? And that's quite possible to do at night or in, du in dusk. So during the day, the point is this. Oh, let me stand up because my knees are giving way. The, the point is this. During the day, any low to the ground dipole, and in these woods here, I've got um, a delta loop, which is, some of you probably saw it, it's about um, seven or eight feet high. It could be... A dipole could be anything, frankly, at, at uh, you know, fence height and above, up to about five metres, absolutely no need to go higher than that during the day, all right? Because we're not going to get any blooming skip anyway. Occasionally, right? If the D layer is being not acting up, then we could get potentially. But I have heard of VK, for instance, which is the other side of the world, on 40 metres during the day. But anyway. There are exceptions to the rule. But in the main, what we'll get is 40 metres during the day is NVIS, near vertical incidence sky wave propagation. Then as the clouds, uh, as the clouds, as the shadows lengthen, the sun starts going down, the sponge starts melting away. And then and minute by minute, you know, all of it, you could be chatting away, having a net at five o'clock in the evening, and then all of a sudden, there's another net in Germany, you know, 700 miles away. Because they were on the same frequency and they didn't know. And this is how arguments start sometimes in contests. Because you get some Russian, some German who've been on the same frequency all day but haven't heard each other. All of a sudden, the sun's going down and they're S9 plus 10 in each other's ears. Of course, then we get into darkness. Now you're vertical at night just storms and you're much stronger and many times on my live stream for uh, like um is who's in it's jeff in the orkney islands i'm apparently 10 to 20 db stronger on the vertical than i am on a on a dipole papa alpha delta lima and that sort of thing now for you guys in the states you probably don't use 40 meters like we use it 40 meters almost covers our whole country in the states that's kind of your state all right unless it's in the evening and you've discovered at night all of a sudden you can go further all right because the d layer is melting away allowing us to refract off the f layer i could show you pretty pictures and prove and demonstrate all sorts of things but that's all you need to know okay which is why this massive four square here that we're putting all these radials down is not going to work during the day because it's a low angle beast right I don't want a low angle beast. I want a nice simple dipole. Marty just said to me actually, what we're building is effectively a spider's web. Uh, I suppose that's a good way of looking at it. I do remember there was a contest station years ago. I can't remember who it was. It might have been uh, KC1XX or Whiskey 3 Lima Papa Lima, but they wanted to improve their top band transmit. And I'm not quite sure if it was a four square or a single vertical. But uh, they had a go and they put miles and miles of copper wire down. And then silver soldered the lot together. I mean, they, they did win. <laughs> That's not the point. There's no way I'm doing that. No, we'll keep it nice and simple. A bit of wire, some heat shrink. There we go. That bit's poking up. We'll give you another one there, look. Excellent. That it looks messy, but it's all connected. So there we are. Now you know the nuts and bolts of it all. Uh, enjoy your radio. Enjoy 40 metres. Martin and I will see you another day. All the best, and Bye for now. I'll tell you what, mate. There'll be people watching this on the internet telling us we've done it all wrong. Well, obviously... Um, Everybody will. 
And so far, everything that I've supposedly done wrong is still working. 